Thank you. Now, you've heard me mention brain damage. There was something in the child's brain. Say, you say to somebody, didn't I tell you not to do that? And you said, yes. And then well, if you know you're not supposed to do it, then why did you do it? And you say, well, I don't know. So what do you mean you don't know? Isn't that your brain? Isn't it in your skull? In your... Yes, it is. But then why did you do it when you knew you... I would be upset if you did it? I don't know. <laughs> and they continue to I don't know you until you give up. You see, well, I then had to go farther because you all are just saying, well, that's true. But I wanted to know where it came from, this brain damage. Now, I went all over. I talked to uh, philosophers, some great, some not so great. And none of them knew. They, all I got was a lot of, well, you have a, uh, oh. <laughs> and then, uh, and that was it. Oddly enough, ladies and gentlemen, I found the answer in the Bible. The answer is in the Bible, where the brain damage comes from. <laughs> this is not blasphemy, nor is it religion. It's what I read. And those of you with children who are bringing up children, those of you with children that are no longer bringing them up because they're gone, whether you put them out or whether they left, doesn't make any difference. Those of us with children, we don't care what happens, the consequences, let them go. <laughs> it's in the Bible. Now, Genesis. I want you all to read Genesis. Not now. <laughs> Genesis. And God created heaven and earth. Genesis. And as you read, you will read words that uh, are no longer being used. And uh, don't let that throw you, because they're not in the dictionary either. <laughs> you know, and, it's, and, and God did the so forth and say of the thingamajiggers. You know, and you go to the dictionary, and the dictionary will say the same thing that you said when you read the word. Wow, I, I, I really have no idea. <laughs> But you can get the general understanding without worrying. God created so forth and so on. Boom. That's what you have to do when, you, when God creates. You do boom. Because you don't know how God did it, you know. But it's got to have had a noise if God did it. It's boom. You know, you can't do like And it was stuck. You know. Force. You must have sound. And God said, let there be boom. And it was. So, as soon as God created something, and it's in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen, get yourselves a thick Bible so there's no words missing. <laughs> it says, God created, and after the creation of it, it says, and God said that it was good, saw it was good, and it was good. Not necessarily in that order. And sometimes all three are not there. Sometimes it just says, and it was good. So we take for granted that God saw it was good and said it was good, so it was good. <laughs> now what I find is wonderful, let's say God said, let there be trees. And, and then in the Bible it says, you know, and the greenness fulfilled the awareness of the love of leaves and limbs and let it, boom, you know, well, it's very deep and heavy, you know. So just let it be trees. And God saw that it was good, said it was good, and it was good. Trees, let the trees stay. Good. Quality of God's work, good. That God was satisfied, good. Just good. The man invents, God creates. Man invented an automobile, called it fantastic. God did a tree, said it was good. You see, man did a refrigerator, said 
amazing. God did a rabbit, said good. The wheels fell off the car and the refrigerator broke down. Tree's still up and the rabbit's still running. Good. This is not a lesson in, in uh, you know, I'm not, this is not, I'm not a born again anything, you understand? No, I'm not leading you. This is, we're not going to have a collection after this. <laughs> so don't start to get shaky. I just want you to know good and then amazing, fantastic, and awesome. <laughs> awesome, the man, awesome, God, good. And so for all of this, God looked around and, and the affirmament thereof, that's a fun word to look up. You want to see the dictionary stumble? Look up affirmament. You'll see the dictionary fumbling all over the place. Affirmament, yes, that's what it was there when it was there because it was misty. Affirmament. And you still don't know what it is after the dictionary said, you see the dictionary stumbling. Now, Everything was there, all of the animals and the insects and uh, everything's functioning. Those of you with children, stay with me and all I'm asking you to do is parallel. I'm not saying put yourself equal with God, but just parallel and tell me if you've not done the same thing yourself and you'll find out where this brain damage comes from. <laughs> so God saw all of this and it was good. God then decided to create a human being who would be the brightest and so forth and so on in God's image. This is what's in the Bible now. And God created this human being. For what reason? To look after the garden. See, God had a garden. <laughs> and God wanted something to look after the garden. So God created a human being who would be the brightest of anything God had created. And so God created, boom, and comes Adam. Now, Adam is walking around the garden. Now if everything was good and if everything was working, there really wasn't anything for Adam to do. I mean there was no trash, you understand? Because there were no human beings, so there was no paper cups, there was no newspapers, there was no chicken bones. Nothing. So all Adam had to do was walk around. That's all. There were no hoses, so he didn't have to get water for anything, you know, everything. And there was a mist, so everything was growing on its own. Nothing was misbehaving. There was nothing for Adam to do, ladies and gentlemen. Take note in the Bible that as when Adam was created, there was nothing after the creation of Adam where God said that God saw that Adam was good said Adam was good, and Adam was good. There's nothing there about Adam being good. Honest to goodness, get a thick Bible. God did not have time to see if Adam was good because Adam started to mess up right away. <laughs> Stay with me, those of you who had children or who had children, because this is my work for you, and you're going to be thankful I did all this for you. <laughs> so now as you read, you notice that quickly, God says, the boy needs help. <laughs> so God put Adam to sleep, took the rib from his body, and created what is called woman. Now, why there's a woo in front of the word man to describe this human being, I don't know. <laughs> I thought about it and I thought about it. 
And the closest I can get to it is that God, after creating, saw her body and said, whoo, man. I don't know. Do you understand? I'm not sure. However, it isn't in the Bible. That part is not there. And there's nothing there that says that God saw that she was good, said she was good, and she was good. That isn't there either. We now, ladies and gentlemen, must take note of the simple fact that God then called these two over immediately. <laughs> God had never called anything that God had created over. The dumbest things on the face of this earth. God never said anything to them, but God called these two over. Those of you with children, stay with me now. <laughs> and God said for the first time the word don't. <laughs> Here we have God creating everything and got to what God thought was the brightest, and now God is saying, don't. God, it's not in the Bible where God said to the fish, don't jump out of the water. <laughs> do, do you understand what I'm saying? God didn't have to say to the kitty cat, don't go in the ocean, you can't swim. <laughs> Everything behaved. God didn't have to say to the mosquito, don't bite the armadillo. <laughs> Everything worked, except these two. <laughs> so God called them over from their busy job of wandering around the garden, <laughs> where they both didn't even know how to talk to each other yet. So God said, don't. They said, don't what? God said, eat the forbidden fruit. So they said, where is it? <laughs> Stay with me now. Those of, those of you with children, you can see it warming up. Because you've lived this too. So God said, it's over there and don't eat it. So they said, right. I don't know where God went. I don't know if God had other things to do. Maybe God was concerned. The Bible will not tell me where God went when these two went over to the fruit. But we do know that they had time to themselves and they eateth the fruit thereof, the forbidden fruit. God came back or woke up or whatever. I don't know what God was doing. The Bible won't say where God went or what God, but God missed that part there. Those of you with children, you understand how you can turn your head for a second. And God saw them eating the forbidden fruit thereof. And God called them over because God was angry. And God said, come here. Now, I don't know how many hears God had to say, because I know as a parent you can say a lot, here, 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 come over here. <laughs> and they came over. And God said, didn't I tell you not to eat? Stay with me now, those of you with children, because it's in the Bible. Didn't I tell you not to eat the forbidden fruit? And they said, uh-huh. <laughs> and God said, well, if you knew you weren't supposed to eat it, then why did you eat it? And they said, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yes. So now, those of you with children, here we go. God said, get out. 
Does this sound familiar? <laughs> On the way out, God said to them, go forth, become fruitful, and multiply. God was angry when God told them to do that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this was not a blessing. <laughs> this was a punishment. And God watched them leave, and these two, because sex feels good, they became fruitful <laughs> and they had two fruits. <laughs> now stay with me now. <laughs> they had two boys. Now, let's say there's four people on earth. <laughs> Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. And one of the sons killed the other one. Now, he could have gone to Hawaii. <laughs> but he had brain damage, you see. <laughs> and that's where it comes from. These first two people on Earth started that whole thing. That's where all the brain damage comes from. And we keep being fruitful and multiplying. And each time you multiply, you get a fruit. <laughs> with brain damage. <laughs> and they all look like that. So, so, so when, you, when you feel that your children are not doing what you expect them to do, and you have put all your time and all your love into this, don't feel guilty about it. Because my feeling is, look, if God had trouble, <laughs> what makes you think you're going to walk through this whole thing unscathed? When the brain damage is there. <laughs> My wife and I have worked, worked very, very hard to help these people go on to uh, a position in their lives where they can support themselves. And we've explained to them that a higher level of education is definitely necessary to have a running start before you hit the wall. And, and, and what is uh, strange, after you have children living with you for a long time, you're not sure of anything. <laughs> they think that we had them because we lacked having someone around to punish. <laughs> they think that we have a strange sense of humor that, that we're telling them to study and do well and to find that part of themselves that is best fitted, best suited to become whatever they want to become if they will but study and work and try to get their own potential and fulfill it. And they think that this is a form of punishment. <laughs> they think that this is done by two sadistic people who want to see them look like fools. <laughs> and so the great quote from my son, when I asked him why he wasn't studying, who said to me, the reason why I'm not studying is because I'm afraid I might fail. <laughs> and I said, but you're already failing. <laughs> he said, yeah, but that way I haven't studied yet. So I said, when are you going to? He said, when I'm dead, don't worry. I got it under control. When I'm ready to go, I'm really going to go. 
I said, but what are you doing in the meantime? He said, having fun. I said, son, you're setting yourself on fire. He said, dad, don't worry, I'm all right. In the meantime, let's talk about my car. I said, what do you want? He said, a Porsche. I said, a Porsche? He said, yeah, I was wondering if I could have a Porsche. I, I said, son, do you know how much a Porsche costs? He said, oh, yes, yeah, around $50,000. I said, and that's what you want? He said, yeah. He said, I was wondering if you could help me. <laughs> I said, what do, what do you mean help? He said, well, I have some money saved up from all my birthdays and Christmas presents and things like that. I said, oh, you've saved this money? He said, yeah. I said, how much do you have? He said, I, um, I think I have uh, around $1,400. I said, and you want me to help <laughs> with a $50,000 car? He said, well, at least I have that, Dad. I mean, some kids don't have anything. I said, yeah, you're right. It's a wonderful position to have oneself in, to look at a kid who's one of the top 10 underachievers in the state of Massachusetts. <laughs> with the two-word philosophy of life, no problem. Four daughters, one son. Twelve-year-old daughter, which means I have one more eleven-year-old daughter to go through. I knew nothing about women. I, I have three brothers, my mother, and I have a wife. Never knew women. Four daughters. Prior to this 12-year-old, I had two daughters turned 11 one year after the other. I didn't know what was wrong with them. So I see these little girls walking around the house, head hung low, just walking, and just, and you, and you say, hi, how's it? Well, okay, I guess, I don't know. It's, uh, you know, okay, well, yeah. And you bring them flowers. Hey, got your little flowers here. You know, try to cheer them up. Oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> well, don't you like them? Yeah, they're pretty. They're really nice. Thanks, Dad. I'll put them upstairs. Hey, I got your pair of jeans. Look at this. Really nice. I picked them up in the place right from the doors. Hey, but even here. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Are you unhappy? Well, I don't, I don't know. I guess, I mean, maybe. 11, 11 year old girls. Sort of, I don't know, I guess, maybe. Never really looked up, always at the floor. And then, for those of you who have 11 year old daughters or about to have them, listen to me carefully. The reason why they're depressed is because 11 year old girls are standing at the window of life waiting for their breasts to come. <laughs> and
and they stand at that window for a long time. And at the end of the day, you see them walk away, looking down. It's, it's, did they come today? No, they didn't come today. And I don't think they're coming tomorrow. So to bring some form of hope, I mean, you could show them, look, they're all around. You're not going to be left out, they'll be here. I don't think so, Dad. I don't know. My wife and I made up the breast fairy. And the breast fairy, we tell them, is a lovely, lovely lady <laughs> who flies around and she has a bicycle pump. <laughs> and sometimes she pumps a long time. And then sometimes she just pumps a little bit, you know. <laughs> and you see this little 11-year-old, you know. And then they turn 12. And the breast fairy has arrived and made a couple of pumps. <laughs> well, we're talking about posture now. And I love it when they really, they, 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 you see 12 year old girls trying to get their coordination together. You know, they, they've already picked this up, you know. They're not poking it, they're just, you know, and you see them trying to. And, and, and that's the period also where your phone bill starts to become, I mean, this becomes ridiculous, the phone bill, and they're talking, well, who said it, and he told, and I didn't say, and you told, that. well, okay, good, okay, and then, even if you're wealthy enough to give the child his or her own phone, there's something, when you're a parent, you, you pick up the phone, one, you hear it ring, and, and, and the kid's not home, you just want to see who it is, and you pick it up, and, hello? And the voice that comes through on the other, ha, ah, his heart is home. And, and, it, and the voice is not one that you would want to talk to or listen to for a long time. It's a pitiful, shaky, quivering, pimple sounding voice. Would you tell her to call Lady Fairy, please? No. <laughs> now, when these girls turn 13, there comes a problem that I'm happy to say I'm not in. This is a 13-year-old girl telling her mother that she's got to trust her. For some reason, mothers get into it with these girls. Now let me help all of the mothers of America to understand why these girls happen to be the way they are. It's not all their fault. I am not a human being to blame God. I would never even give God a memo. But I will say this, and it may sound like a complaint, but I think I can be saved by saying, I don't understand why God made the male late in turning over this puberty period. The female understands and at least feels and breaks early. Pow, she's gone, man. You know, age 10, you can, my wife came to me and said, Bill, I just want you to know that at certain times, 
some of your daughters may achieve a certain period of time when they will, uh, and the bodies change, so you have to be ready. And so let's have this discussion. So brought the girls down and said, this is, I mean, my wife almost reintroduced me. This is your father, and in case I'm not here, and that time of your life comes when you have, your father will aid you in this, and then, you know, and this is what you do with this, and you take this, and you take her up. And my, words use, my wife's using words like gently, and you will assume, and she will be, and don't let the child get frightened, and the thing, and so. And I'm standing there, yes, I understand this, and I'm very happy to be. Well, I, I got caught in that by one daughter who went, oh, dad! Dad! So I said, Beagle, get away from me! I said, no, I'm here to help. Oh, no, bro. Oh, you're gross, dad. You're really gross. I don't want you to see me, dad. Get away. I said, yes, but look. Oh, dad, call mother, please. I'll just stay right here. No, get up, go. No, leave me alone. And and I couldn't look at the girl for the next three days because she was, oh God, you saw me when I was out there. I said, but I'm your father, I don't care. <laughs> Dad, I'm telling you, it was very strange. So I'm not in charge of that anymore. <laughs> now, 13-year-old girls have been from 11 waiting for the breast, at 12 walking properly, now putting things on the eyes and the eyelids and uh, makeup and learning bracelets, rings and things and the hottest shoes and things, socks and twirling and rolling up sleeves and letting collars hang out and leaving this down and things slipping off the shoulder and learning how to walk and look at men and boys and playing love songs and being in love with poster pictures and falling in love with TV people and movie people and love and oh God, I just can't believe it. <laughs> and discussing with girlfriends about who, oh God, and, and just the word hunk and crunch and oh God, life and if I would just die. Now girls are there, 12 to 13, they're there. Love, romance, songs. Oh, love you, find you, oh God, oh my God. But boys, God made boys, to, to even up to 12. They're, they're grabbing frogs. You got a frog? Yeah, 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 there's a frog, is it? Yeah, you, you. You wanna go? You wanna go get some snakes? Yeah, and we'll get a cat and we'll rip. A, we'll, we'll throw a cat around. Yup, yup. And then we can dodge traffic for a while. Okay. Yup, 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 yup. Oh, there's a girl. Go get her. Beat her up. You know. Hit her. Hit her in the back. Oh God! What did you? Oh, oh yup, 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 yup. Take that. Take that. You dirty rat. You dirty rat. I would rather kiss a dog on the nose, then kiss a girl on the cheek. <laughs> now with the male, it's overnight. And wherein we have the breast fairy, for the males we have the fairy of good dream. And you don't have to tell your kid about this one. <laughs> and you know when the dream has occurred, because after, after that, your son will become interested in, in, in taking care of his own sheets. <laughs> I mean, even before breakfast, he will have his sheets under his arm. And, and he will take them downstairs and, and wash them himself. And, and you will say to your wife, my goodness, isn't he wonderful? He, just, he, he does his own sheets and, and his pajamas every morning. He's wonderful. You know, and yes, I believe in cleanliness, mother and dad. And if you don't mind, I think I'll go back and take another nap.
And so the fairy of good dream has arrived, and the boys see girls. No! No! And the girls go, oh my God, he's here. But they don't know how long these fools are going to last, because they weren't too bright before then. So they don't know if it's going to be yanked away. So they start, oh God, we got to go. We got to get over to the mall. Hurry up, we'll go to the Galleria. Hurry up, let's go on. We'll see them over there. And so the girls want to go. It isn't so much to, that you want to do something. They're afraid you're going to lose it. So now the mother say, where do you think you're going? Well, mother, well, mother, I'm just going. I'm just going, mother. Now you, you tell me, where do you think? And that's when, as the father, you hear the two off in the room. You, where? Tell, I want to know. Well, Mother, I'm just going over to the place. You're not going in there. You'll stay in this house. But, Mother, you don't understand. Well, mother, can't you trust me? I don't trust what you're, you're telling me about nasty boys running for out of back and forth. But I don't want to miss. And then you hear the keyword, Mother, this is my life. I mean, Mother, your life is over. <laughs> my daughter told my wife that. I went upstairs and packed. <laughs> no sense living with a woman whose life is over. <laughs> I have a friend of mine. We finished playing tennis. So he said, you know, there's something I've never told you before. He said, but you know, my daughter, when she was 16, she became pregnant. He said, uh, actually, she waited till she was in her eighth month before she told me and her mother. <laughs> he said, I wanted to kill her, but she was eight months pregnant. <laughs> he said, so, my wife and I said, well, let's uh, go away for a while. So we told the neighbors we were going to go away for a while because uh, she had a job opportunity, and I took, a, took some money out of the bank, and we stayed away for four months. Came back, and we told our neighbors and friends that we bought a kid. So, she, our daughter, decided then that she had made a mistake and she'd blown a lot of things in her life and that she really wanted to go to college, she wanted to study, she wanted to know, she wanted to become a lawyer. All the things we'd been trying to talk to her about, she now realized. And so she went back to high school, graduated, we live in Connecticut, you know. But she decided she wanted to go to UC UCLA. She wanted to go to UCLA. Live in Connecticut. <laughs> Got a grandkid that's hers. She wants to go away to UCLA. Not our kid, we're just the grandparents. So you're gonna take the kid with you? She said, well, no, I was thinking that you all would watch the kid and I go to college, uh, and I'll be home for holidays. <laughs> so she went to UCLA for four years, and she did as she promised. She would come home and visit us and her child on holidays, doing us a favor. <laughs> and then she graduated, and. She decided she wanted to go to law school in Washington. Not D.C., the state of Washington. She'd met a fellow out there who was also a lawyer. And so she went to law school. We still had the kid. Now the kid is getting ready to go to junior high school. <laughs> My 
my granddaughter. So my daughter graduated from law school and decided that before she practiced law, she wanted to find herself. <laughs> so she went to Africa to help people find water. We get postcards from her. My granddaughter's pregnant. We can't find her mother to tell her. <laughs> so I said, well, thanks for the story. I have four daughters. I went home. I called the two oldest ones down. I said, is anybody here pregnant? So they said, Dad. I said, no, is there anybody here who's pregnant? Well, Dad, how can you be so gross? Just come out. I said, look, I'm not interested in, in words. I don't want to argue about semantics. Is there anybody pregnant? Just answer me, yes or no. You, no, but that's enough. Now, you pregnant? No, Dad, no. All right, that's enough. That's all I wanted to know. Well, golly, Dad, this is weird. This is very strange behavior. I mean, golly, Dad, it's real. I've never seen anything. I mean, what is this? Why are we being, we being subjected to all this kind of harassment? I mean, is this America or what? I said, now, listen. I'm not interested in who's doing what. But tomorrow, I want to have another meeting. <laughs> so they went off. Whoa, Dad is really on the warpath. He's weird, strange, yeah. So I went to see this friend of mine, OBGYN, LSMFT. <laughs> and I said, George, do me a favor. I said, my wife and I, I mean, we, we always thought of ourselves as being quite liberal in terms of talking about sex and, you know, I said, but I think what we did was we timed it wrong. I mean, we explained the whole human body and the, the importance of not getting pregnant or not, you know, when they were eight. But I, I think we're, eight has nothing to do with it, because at eight, they all agreed they wouldn't do anything, you know? <laughs> so he said, I understand what you're saying. I said, well, I don't know if you do, George, because you see, um, my wife and I don't want them to do it. We really don't want them to do it. But if they do it and then it happens and then they they have it then then they're going to have it and then they, they're going to give it to us. <laughs> and we don't want it. Because then they're going to go look for water in Africa and he said, I understand. I said, okay, I just want you to know that, you know, they're, they're going to do it anyway, and if they do it, then, 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 and they don't have it, then they're going to get it, and then they're going to give it to us if they have it. He said, right. I said, so give me something so that they can take it, and then they won't have it, and we won't get it. <laughs> so he laid out about nine things. He said, yeah, you can take all. I said, give me all of them twice. So put them in brown paper bags, which is apropos. I called them down. They both went down. They were ready. Dad, listen, we're not. Today hasn't changed. We're not. You know, I said, no, that's not it. I emptied out bag. I said, now look, you, before you go out on a date, I want you to do whatever these things say. I don't, I want you to drink it, uh, inhale it, press it, mash it, dissolve it, screw it. Push it, bang it, I don't care. Make sure it's in there and in there good so that you don't have it because I don't want it.
So my wife, they went upstairs. I've never seen them so tickled in my life. Whoa, far out. Dad is progressive. Way. So my wife says, that was really wonderful. I said, thank you. She said, so now you want to talk to your son? So at that time, you know, my son was 14 and serious about himself. <laughs> How you doing, Dad? You know, my man, Mr. Smooth. So my wife said, well, what about your son? I said, what about him? She said, well, you got to explain this to him. You know, I said, what for? She said, because he may get somebody in trouble. I said, but that's not the male's problem. <laughs> My wife said, are, are you kidding me? I said, no, it's not the, it's the female's job to protect herself. You know, it's like a goalie. It, you know, it, it thinks, <laughs> you, have to, you have to keep people from scoring on you. My wife said, you've got to be kidding. I said, no, I'm not kidding. She said, well, if you feel that way, then when your son gets somebody in trouble, the two of you are going to look after that child. <laughs> I said, you're not serious. She said, try me. She said, encourage him to go out and have big fun on a goal. <laughs> I said, well, bring the boy down here. I can talk to him. So my son came down. <laughs> said, how you doing, Dad? I said, sit down, son. I said, son, you like girls? He said, oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, uh, do you have a girlfriend? He said, oh, Dad, I got, you know, there's one girl that I like, you know, but there's, there's a couple more that I, you know, that I like. It all depends. I said, well, how do, you, how do you do with these girls? He said, okay, I guess, Dad, you know. I said, well, I mean, do you kiss? He said, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we kiss, you know. I said, sometimes get a little hot and heavy? He said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I said, well, what would happen if you were kissing and it got hot and heavy and nobody was around and you started feeling and touching and she said, oh my goodness, please, and you said, I want this, and all of a sudden she said, well, come on and let's, let's, let's do it. He said, well, dad, I'm only a gentleman. I would have to oblige. <laughs> So I reached in, pulled out the other bag, <laughs> and I pulled out this packet. I said, see these, son? I said, the next time you go out on a date, I want you to put one of those on. As a matter of fact, before you leave this house, I want you to put it on. As a matter of fact, before you go out that door, I want to see it on. He said, Dad, I said, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. It's about two days later. It's going out. I said, come here. He said, no, Dad. I said, let me see it. And he had it on.